Okay, y'all. First of all, I'm looking like um, one of Seeley's kids or one of KK's kids from Love & Hip Hop Atlanta um, because I just got finished washing, conditioning, detangling my hair, and now um, I moisturized it, and now I'm letting it sit. And then, you know, once it dry, you know, tomorrow, I'll take it out, and it'll be a little twist out, you know, natural hair moments. Anyway. So this is Love and Hip Hop, y'all. This episode is called Free at Last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. Well, some of these folks are still trapped. All right. So Tommy, she comes over um, and talks to um, Stevie. Pretty, pretty much trying to flirt with Stevie because, you know, she found out last episode or the episode before that that Scrap was trying to hit up Carly and trying to get, trying to talk to Carly, basically. Carly Red. Carly orange, Carly yellow, Carly blue. And um, she wearing this little um, skin tight outfit. I think it's see through. She told me, you know, I used to rap, right? And, you know, he was just like, well, look, this it, this industry images everything. And I know you got a lot of beef with a lot of people. You can't be going around being bitches ass all across the world. Like, that's just not going to rock. And it's all about being respected, as especially as a businesswoman. She was like, oh, I can do that. I'm willing to change for real. I'm Tommy. So, you know, she's basically just doing that to get Stevie, um, to get under scrap skin, you know, messing with his play play uncle. Okay. So, um, Carly and Scrap, they're in the car. Scrap reveals to Carly that he, you know, about his prison sentence and she starts to cry. Um, we, Carly was with, um, Life Jennings, but she say that he's on life support. So, you know, Carl, Life Jennings ass ain't been around in a minute. So I don't know what the hell is going on with that. None of us really know. Um, he was on the first episode, and I, he was—I think he was on last season. I didn't watch last season, but he was on the first episode, I think, of this season, and then he just kind of vanished. Uh, but real artists like like him don't need to be a part of this damn show anyway. But whatever, folks do what they got to do, I guess. All right. So anyway, um. So she's talking to Scrap and she starts to get emotional and, and she was just like, every time I finally like a dude, you know, they always leave. Something always goes left because you're not right, Carly. You suck ass. That's why. Look how, look how you messing around with Scrap and you know that you are in the circle of, of the people that he hang that he, that his, uh, he's screwing Tommy and his baby mama, but you still choose to mess around with him. He putting you up on the counter and, and licking your toes and stuff. Like, are you serious? You know, when, when you can't do all kinds of shit and expect for that not to come back to you. Like, girl. So anyway, and he, you know, wipes her, hotel, wipes her face or whatever. They plan on going to the hotel or whatever and all that stuff. So Jocelyn meets up with Dawn. Um, Jocelyn found the whole contract that Stevie J um, had been hiding from my ass. You know, basically... You know, this whole thing with her trying to find new management and trying to not work with Stevie J. But, you know, he always goes back to the contract. It says this in the contract. You know, the, the name stays home. The name stays home. She can have all the other stuff, but the name stays home. You know, Ike Turner. But um, Carly, not Carly, Jocelyn, she was just talking to Don. She was just like, so guess what, Don? I found the contract. And the shit is up. The jig is up. It's um, It's been three years. The contract is old. It's 50. The contract is 50. These chicks are 50. Okay. I found the contract and the contract oh. owed. <coughs> and I was just like, damn, the contract owed. Oh. So, you know, basically the contract has expired and, <coughs> sorry. She's meeting up um, with her lawyer soon and creating a new contract. And basically, she's not messing around with no Stevie anymore. I think they're officially like done. I follow her on Snapchat. Y'all follow me on Snapchat, by the way, at it's Kingsworld89. Oh, child, belching and everything. But, um, let's see. Oh, and it's all lowercase, by the way, lowercase letters. At it's Kings World 89. Anyway, so they're talking, and, um, Don was just like, oh, you finna, you know, hang his ass out to dry. And Jocelyn, she's finally, you know, coming into her own. She don't want to be under Stevie's control and all that. So she's going to meet up with her lawyer soon and, um, you know, do a new contract. And, you know, so I don't know what's going on with Stevie and Jocelyn. It's really just a, a, a twisted ass relationship, really. Moving on. <coughs> um, Charlene. 
which is Rashida's mama, meets up with Ernest, which is Mama D's husband. Um, they and they wanted to talk about the last um, interaction that they all had with each other, with a Mama D showing out at the table with Deb and Rashida and Scrappy, the original Scrappy, and all that stuff. And um, um, Ernest says that uh, Mama D she had a really bad car accident. However long ago, you know, it, was, it damaged her head and her knees and stuff. And, you know, she's an alcoholic. She's bipolar. She has all these issues. And, you know, so it's, it's really been a difficult time being with them. And, you know, Ernest, he probably knows the struggle with Mama D. They've been together a long time. And I think he went to jail or they separated somehow. And he came back into her life. And, you know, they didn't want Scrappy and his sister. Didn't want uh, Mama D to marry him again. Or to get back with him, but she did. She did it all the way. She even married his ass. So, you know, Ernest seems like a decent enough, you know, dude or whatever for Mama D. <clears throat> she seems the more turned up one. He seems the more calm, chill one. It's usually how it is, it seems, in relationships. It's always one that's usually the big personality and one that's usually, you know, quiet and, and um, chill and calm and, you know, all that. So, anyway, <clears throat> um, Charlene felt kind of bad for, you know, the things that she said about Mama D, you know, and, you know, and she didn't know she really had an illness. No, She didn't know she was really batshit crazy, you know, and couldn't help it. But, you know, she don't take her pills and all this other stuff. So, you know, um, Charlene suggested they meet with a the therapist. So he's going to set up the whole thing, Ernest, talking to the therapist. Um, I think that's the, or the pastor, the same guy that married them, I believe. So um, let's just get straight to that. It was pretty much... You know, nothing, you know, Mama D and her shenanigans, you know, he done brought the, he done spilled the palace's um, secrets and now it's going to be on and popping. Um, and so, you know, she got some for his ass and she was like, don't I compliment you and say how fine you is every day? He says that he feels belittled by her and he knows what she's capable of, you know, or maybe he don't know, you know, he just knows that she's not all the way there in the head. And, you know, he's kind of just over there living in fear. But whatever, sir. You married a crazy woman. You knew she was crazy a long time. So there you go. Um. Okay. Uh, moving on along. There is um. Car um. What's that child's name? Tommy. Tommy came over to Scrap's place. Scrap in a new damn place every time. It seems like I don't know. It's probably just for show. But anyway, um. She comes in and she's upset. She finds the receipt, the hotel receipt of Carly Red. I'm assuming her real name is Carly Lewis. At least that's what she said. She was just like, you know, I found the hotel receipt and you was in the hotel with that bitch and yada yada. She found the receipt in the car, um, in, in Scrap's car. And, um, you know, all of a sudden she dives on his ass like um, the Beast from X-Men. And uh, she's just riding him, and then all of a sudden, here comes all these security, you know, all these dudes in full black suits. And they're getting them off of her, and she was just like, you're fucking crazy. She's talking about, how you gonna mess with an old bitch with worms? I fucking hollered. <laughs> Y'all, when she said that, I hit the floor. How can you mess with an old bitch with worms? I could not. She was just like, you ain't shit, and then... Fuck you and this and that. And then all of a sudden she starts crying when he starts to talk. And he called her pathetic. All of a sudden she jumps right back up like the jack in the box and dies back on his ass. And Tommy add, Tommy need, need to take this that same medicine that Mama D is not taking, that she should be taking. They need to go ahead and uh, subscribe Tommy some as well. It's Tommy Tommy's off the chain. Tommy is entertainment. Okay, Tommy would have been good on a show like Bad Girls Club or something. She would have ran that house. For real. That's 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 that yeah. All right, um I wanna who do I wanna see in the ring? I, I wanna see Monice from Love Hip Hop Hollywood, um, Tommy from this season of Atlanta, um, Tammy Roman, Evelyn Lozada, and who else? Um Camila from Love and Hip from Bad Girls Club. Remember her? Used to beat everybody ass. You know, let's just get a whole bunch of fighting helpers in, in one house and have a reality show and see what happens. How about that? Good Ratchet TV. All right. Um, so let's see. Moving on from that, Scrap basically lied to Carly, not lied to Tommy. 
that he wasn't sleeping with Carly and all that stuff because Scrap said that his mama said that, you know, you protect the people that you care about and the truth hurts, so you don't tell them the truth. Thanks to my lovely subscribers, you know, Mark and all them and Taiwan and all y'all. Love y'all. But, um, they told me that, um, you know, KK had just recently got, um, arrested so and but she's out now but she got arrested and everything not you know was it the other night something like that so it's just hip-hop trash i'm telling you it's just a mess the lost clark sister craziness ain't your ain't your, ain't your family a gospel family why is you getting in all this trouble kk anyway moving on along <laughs> um okay so, Scrap, he meets up with Carly Red at the Chinese buffet, and they're talking, and um, he asks her, did she purposely leave that hotel receipt in the car? She lies and says that she didn't. She probably did. Or she was just like, you said that she wasn't messing with Tommy no more, and yada, yada. So, I guess she felt comfortable enough to just leave shit behind, knowing that she gonna come back, you know, two days later to go and come and get it or whatever leave a little heel or two a little lip gloss or two a little panty set or two you know it's no big deal because you know he's only messing with me boom boom she thought she was the main chick she's she's too old to be this naive but um so they had that whole thing and she was just like I, you're just in a fucking circle and i just feel like i'm being played and yada of course it's a circle child Oh, Carly. Carly is one of the most disliked people on reality television, but she's still freaking here. Like, she got some... I liked her, not last season, but the season before that. She she Carly can be cool, but she just does shit to just mess it up. Like, Dime can be cool, but she just does shit to mess it up. It, it don't take long, and I just get so disappointed. I'm like, oh, God. You really could get a fan here. I mean, really. All right, um, so uh, Jocelyn and Mimi, they meet up. Jocelyn crying and upset. One minute she dislikes Stevie. The next minute she don't. Jocelyn was just like, you know, Mimi, I just found out that, um, that Stevie J is a baby. He has another baby on the way. Mimi was just like, what? A baby? He has a baby, another baby. Actually, it's two babies. And, jo and Mimi was just like, how you hit us? Apparently some stripper, um, Jocelyn, you know, she still got her ear to the street. She still got her homegirls to be working them corners or whatever. And um, she was just like, you know, she learned from, you know, one of her homegirls that Stevie J got a baby by a stripper. This is apparently on the blogs. I don't remember seeing this shit, but whatever. Um, and apparently the girl had got an abortion, but she actually didn't have an abortion. Apparently she went on ahead and had the baby and she's against child support from Stevie. Um, and apparently it's the second girl that's allegedly, supposedly, all this is alleged saying that, um, Stevie, you know, got another baby. So this makes like, okay, the two boys, um, the two girls, uh, Eva, which is Mimi's daughter. And if it's two more, that makes seven kids for Stevie J. And Jocelyn was just sitting there crying. Um, and, you know, she was just like, they already hitting his pockets hard, they hitting his pockets, and this and that. And um, so, you know, who knows if he got these babies. I guess we'll find out later on in the season or maybe next episode because Mimi's determined to find out what's going on with Stevie J. She still has feelings for Stevie J, obviously. Stevie don't work some kind of voodoo magic. I don't know if it's his, if it's his penis. I don't know what it is, but. Oh, Lord. She, she really should have stayed with Chris, Mimi. She's all in this drama and all in this mess. Even though I didn't care for Chris a lot of times. But, uh, you know, they was a cute couple. And, you know, Mimi just trying to stay relevant and being involved in Stevie J and, and Jocelyn's business. Sad fucking day. It really is. Um, but once a bitch will hang on a shower, car, shower rod for a storyline, she'll do anything. Put nothing past her. All right. Um. So let's see. Uh, this is the last scene where Tommy she meets up with Carly Red. Carly Red is on her little radio station. She's talking to some dude. You know, Carly is just a thought. She flirts with everybody. I don't even know how her uterus is still attached at this point. She's just she's 
she's out there. Y'all, you know, I'm sure you've seen pictures of her with Tiger after Tiger broke up with Kylie Jenner. Just a mess. But anyway, um, Tommy, you know, uh, Tommy shows up to Carly's radio station to talk to her, of course. And Carly's drinking some water. She turned around. Tommy and these, when Tommy be coming to read these girls, she be sharp as a tack. <laughs> Tommy, I mean, it just her, her outfits and shit is just over the top, just just so Hollywood prostitute, and I live for it. So funny, the shades and the lipstick and the furs and shit, just a mess. This fur was like orange and turquoise. I hollered as soon as I ass walked in, but um, her and Carly starts to talk and get into it. Tommy's just like, "Hey, how you doing? You good?" I heard you've been having fun lately, you know. You know, Tommy always look. All Tommy talks like she's a little bit high, or um, a little bit. She's 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 tipsy, but she's not so tipsy to the point where she can't like stand or don't know what's going on or whatever. She's either she's either really high. She she talks like she's high mainly, like she's just high, you know, like she's just you know yeah, and you know it's whatever. Okay, I heard about that public, you know she. I don't know. She she she's entertainment. But um anyway, she starts to talk to Carly and uh they were just talking and um you know, throwing jabs back and forth and Tommy was like your bad mother, yada yada and I've never seen Carly Red Daughter, I don't think. But um and she was just like, You old as hell, you're a forty year old bitch and you're acting like this and you're thirsty and yada yada. Was going back and forth. Tommy was just like, "Yeah, I'm gonna mess with, around with um Stevie J just as a pawn." And Carly was just like, "That's his uncle. That's his uncle." And you know, Carly called Tommy a hoe. And you know, Carly was just Tommy. Tommy was just like, "I'm not a hoe." And you know, I got your one. I'm gonna expose your ass before you know it. Tommy and her heels got up on the damn counter that damn quick, like a fucking um raptor dinosaur. Um, and <laughs> it was funny as hell. All of a sudden, the security ran. You know, Carly Red ain't about that life. She, as much shit as Carly Red gets herself into, she cannot and will not fight. Which I don't, if you can't fight, why do you start shit? Like, just shut up and just sit there. You know, like, don't say nothing. But she can't help herself. Well, then security came and got off the counter, and then that was the last of the scene. Carly, Tommy is going to have a record with Love and Hip Hop. Or maybe reality television, period, for going off on people the most. Like, different women. Getting ready to fight different women so many, you know. We'll see. We'll count how many times. I think this makes three times. Because first it was Tiara. Then it was Dawn. Now it's Carly. So we'll see who else that she uh, tries to attack. Tommy, get yourself together. You're a pretty girl. You really are. She need help. Skirt, what does these men do to these women? It's, it's, it's crazy. I don't know. But um, anyway, that was pretty much it. That was my review. I don't think I missed anything. Hope you guys liked it. <coughs> Mr. Chalaki on Google Plus. Follow me at X Kings World on Instagram and Twitter. Um, Chase King was here on Facebook and at X Kings World eighty nine on Snapchat. All right, see you guys later. Bye bye. Yes, <laughs> I really do.